It's coming on to Rome. Beautiful Sunday. Birds are chirping and stuff. And it's time for another Vikings news dump. And yes, uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And uh, so it, it is the birthday today. Mm. Uh, and with birthdays, it's always good to have time to be re reflective about things. And just reflecting back on the 2023 season, obviously it was disappointing. You know, 7 and 10, not making the playoffs. Kurt getting hurt, Jefferson getting hurt, four separate quarterbacks. But I, I feel like there were some moments that were just like so ridiculous that you couldn't even believe that they were happening, right? So, you know, beating the Niners was great. Beating the Packers at Lambeau was fantastic. But the whole passionate thing, I mean, that took over the sports world for a hot second. And Josh Dobbs, you know, coming in via trade from the Cardinals, uh, Vikings picking him up after Kurt got hurt, and him against the Falcons uh, after Jaron Hall got, got a concussion. Uh, Nick Mullins was still on IR with a back injury. And Dobbs went out against the Falcons, was asked thank you for a little bit, and then put together just a, a stunning second half. And then uh, against the Saints, put up a phenomenal first half before – Kevin O'Connell got a little bit too conservative, trying to salt that game away. Jameis Winston came off the bench and did ridiculous things. But remember, like I was thoroughly convinced that that Dobbs mania, you know, the, he was gonna scramble and just throw and just get touchdowns and put up points and just like it, it was gonna be a magic carpet ride. But and, and the Vikings were gonna win the Super Bowl with Josh Dobbs. I firmly believe that for a hot second and you did too and a lot of uh, josh dobbs sold like ten thousand jerseys is that crazy i love it man and and you know things just sort of came crashing down i mean the broncos game was whatever then the bears game was frustrating and the, the, this stupid game against the raiders the, the vikings final win of the season is just <sighs> so i i was in vegas and i was actually thinking about going to the game except like nosebleed level like 400 level tickets were like 500 bucks and just like man i'm glad i skipped that yeah it was rough like how do you score three points and still cover <laughs> the two and a half it's ridiculous man but i mean yeah well it was real it was fun it wasn't real fun but we'll always have memories like I, now i kind of want, want to find a dobbs jersey there you go. Uh, something I also want to find. So I, I did not know that this was a thing, but apparently this is a thing. So United States tackle football team, they put a win in the books. The United States defeats Panama 86-12 to at the 2024 International Federation of American Football World Cup. Goal, hashtag gold standard, hashtag all in. I did not know that the United States had a national tackle football team. Uh, I know about the flag football, you know, flag football getting into the Olympics and stuff, but tackle team, I did not know. So, first off, how did Panama score 12? Huh? How How is that? Like, what, was there some, uh, like, uh, where, where did the Panamanians get their kids? Like, where are these Panamanian players coming from? I don't get it, man. But, yeah, the, but, uh, the USA putting up 86 points. Now, I had to do a lot of digging. Like the the roster for this uh, U.S. football team, tackle football team, is not readily available, and so uh, I'm someone who who sort of prides themselves uh, my, myself on knowing thing, a thing or two about football. I don't recognize a single name on this roster. I I, I don't. Now I tried to reverse engineer this. So the quarterback in the photo is number ten. And number 10 is Aliam Appler from North Palm Beach, Florida. And Aliam Appler is apparently a, a, a commit to Florida Atlantic. So he's either a high school senior or a college freshman. I, I can't really decipher. But e either way, like th this is the, the gap between the USA and, and the rest of the world in terms of tackle football. Like, I mean, so, some of these teams, I'm sure or the best and the brightest that these countries have to offer. Uh, but the USA is literally playing fringe two-star recruits. And I, I assume that's what a, a majority of this team is. And they're just putting the bang thing on everyone. They're probably just running four plays, probably not even blitzing. Just like, all right, fill the A-gap against uh, Panama. <laughs> it's funny, man. Hey, but either way, I want this to become a thing. 
I, first off, I, I want to eventually see a football dream team. Like I, I want to see Jefferson Burrow and Chase reunite and then just go, uh, you know, beat Germany's ass by 200. It'd be great. Third time we've done that. Hmm. Uh, also, some that we've done. Uh, tight end U uh, was in full swing over the weekend. Uh, Hawkinson uh, there, uh, Josh Oliver's there, as well as Robert Tanyan getting things done. T E U. It's looking good, man. It's looking look fantastic. Uh, so I, I like that. Was the edge rushers get together? Tight ends get together. For sh- uh, probably should be like a wide receiver DB thing. Except I, I feel like there would be so much ish talking there. It would be fantastic. Uh, but could you imagine the one-on-ones? Like the wide receivers and, and corners got together. And they did like a one-on-one tournament like Destroying does. Like whenever he goes around. That would be fantastic. Yeah, but it, it is cool. And also that's where you know, Hawkins and Tanyan, um, you know, got, got to know each other uh, during the off seasons as time before Tanyan became a Viking. Uh, so it's good stuff there. Also good stuff. Uh, so we talked yesterday about Blake Cashman outside. How about that? The pride of Eden Prairie, former university of Minnesota and Go- golden Gopher walk on turned captain. It might be the more underrated uh, free agent signing of the year. Uh, Cashman was talking to Gabe Henderson. Uh, he said this, uh, quote, there's three things every long-term player has, accountability, discipline, and sharp focus. As long as you keep those three things, stay healthy, and keep up with the physical demands uh, of the game, you can play a long time in this league. And, uh, and Cashman, so he spent three years with the Jets, uh, two with the Texans, and we're very happy to have him here in the great state of Minnesota back home. And he just turned 28. And off-ball linebackers can be very serviceable into, like, the early to mid-30s. So, I mean, it's possible that Cashman, you know, reels off a nice five, six, seven-year run here uh, with the Vikings uh, as a true blue leader in the middle of the thing. He's a tackling machine. He's great in coverage. Uh, he's great communicating as well. So, yeah, I think Cashman is going to be uh, r- really, really nice in this floor's defense. Also nice in this floor's defense. Uh, actually, nice in every defense, man. Uh, Harrison Friggin' Smith. So, <sighs> You know, talk about him being a Hall of Famer. For for my money, I think he should be in. But I, I don't think that he's racked up enough all pro or um, also he was snubbed from the 2010 all decade team. I think that will cost him at the end of the day. But Pro Persuasion points this out. Since 2012, no defensive. Uh, 2012 is the first year that uh, Harrison entered the league. A no defensive back has had more tackles, 766, more sacks, 19 and a half, and more interceptions, 34, than Viking safety Harrison Smith. Some would call that generational. Well, you know, part of that is too. I mean, heading to year thirteen, like that, that's a long, that's a long career uh, for a defensive back. So you know, part of it is uh, accumulation, but also, I mean, that's a skill set in itself. Just being very good for a very long period of time. And Harrison, like Harrison being back, isn't a charity case. Like Harrison can still ball, like, as evidenced last season. Uh, so I'm happy that he's back. This is probably the last one. Uh, but yeah, for for me, he should be in the Hall of Fame. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens at the end of the day. Uh, also happening. So Jeff Diamond, uh, former executive, former GM of the Vikings, part of the day, uh, predicted when a, a rookie quarterbacks will start. Uh, so he picked Williams, Daniels, and Bonix uh, as Week One starters. I can see that. I mean, Williams already been named starter uh, because just having things handed to you is the name of the game for Caleb Williams. Daniels. I mean, Daniels got beat Mariota. Should be an issue. And then Bo Nix has to beat out who? Jared Stidham? Nah, I mean, stupid-ass Sean Payton's going to roll Bo Nix uh, out and throw him to the Wolves right away. Uh, Drake May, week six. So th- they do like Jabroni Brisket uh, in New England, back for the first time. And, you know, Brissett is solid uh, as a spot starter. You know, he's showed that throughout his career. And May p- probably needs uh, to work a little bit on things. But we'll see. Uh, he's got J.J. McCarthy uh, pegged at week nine. Uh, let's see here. Again, I'm a professional. So, you know, why shouldn't I have the schedule up? All right, so week nine to be Colts. Oh, so we pointed that one out before, too, where you're at home, extended uh, mini buy after the Thursday night game, week eight against the Rams, and then you just go from there. Now, yes, you do have three road games right after the Colts game, but, you know, it'll be fine. Uh, so if that happens... I don't know if, Mc, uh, if Darnold's rolling, just let it keep rolling, man. Uh, and, and the Penix, uh, he's got 2026. 20, so not this year, not next year, the year after that. And also Penix is going to be 26, 27. So that happens. Uh, lastly, 
something that also happens. So one of the more viral trends is, um, you know, quote tweeting, uh, you ever wasted three years of your life with someone? <laughs> it's got a picture of Norv. So, I mean, so remember when Zimmer was hired in the first place, 2014, he obviously wanted someone to be the head coach of the offense and picking up Norv Turner, uh, you know, former head coach of the Chargers. Uh, yeah. Stylistically, it didn't really sync up with Teddy. All right, so Teddy was the first round pick, number thirty-two in twenty fourteen, uh, after Norv had been hired, and you know Norv, you know the five, seven, nine step drops, you know thrown vertical, air Coriel school things, and Teddy was a shotgun, read the defense, beat the defense with your minds, make side adjustments at the line of scrimmage, uh, stress the the defense horizontally. And you know, put put your put the ball uh, in spots where receivers could go out and go get it, right? And just operate and dissect that that thing, right? So the vertical passing game wasn't necessarily Teddy's strong suit. So that was immediately a style clash. Also, uh, when Adrian Peterson wasn't suspended uh, during his time with Norv, like he was just enamored with him. And Teddy need to be in the shotgun, and Adrian need to be in the I formation behind a fullback. So things stylistically were just not matching up, right? And Especially when the Vikings were having issues with the offensive line, especially with Matt Khalil. I mean, that that's when Norv was still putting it like, Oh, you know, we don't have protection for a seven step drop, but just keep going. Yeah. yeah it's just sort of ridiculous. But uh, I mean Shermer came in for a hot second. Well, he was hired as tight ends coach, you know, totally not to replace Norv in twenty sixteen, and then Norv just said, F it, I quit. Uh, and then Shermer <sighs> I mean, Shermer got himself the, the Giants job, and then he forgot about 38-7, but that's regardless. Yeah. Uh, also, what frustrated me about Norv is that he's like, hey, Cordero Patterson, you are a unique physical freak. You are extremely rudimentary. Like, you are never going to be a full route tree, uh, you know, pr- pretty feet, yeah, and you know, just really sutured up full, full route tree wide receiver. You're not going to be that, but... What you can be is a guy that we just give the ball and you go out and do physical things. And that's exactly what uh, Bill 3 by 5 Mus- Musgrave did with Cordero in 2013. But then Norv, Norv and Zimmer basically just ruined uh, Cordero's career as an offensive player. Because basically they're just saying, hey, if you don't learn this entire route tree, we're not going to play you. And that's not Cordero's game. It never was. And they're like, oh, you know who's really good? Charles Johnson. Because he runs good routes. As opposed to... Every time Cordero touched the football, he could score a touchdown. And at the end of the day, that's what my, uh, it's, it's so frustrating because Musgrave had the blueprint for Cordero. He's like, hey, five, ten times a game, we're literally just going to line Cordero up in the backfield and give him the ball. So, it, again, it's so stupid that Musgrave and Arthur Smith were the two offensive minds that got the most out of Cordero. It's just ridiculous. It's such a wasted career. Like, Cordero Patterson should be in the Hall of Fame as a kick returner, but – he could have been so much more as an offensive weapon. And it all started getting screwed up here with Norv and Zimmer. That's what it comes down to. But other than that, I have no thoughts. Um, that, that, that's it. But uh, Vikings news dump on this beautiful Sunday. You guys are the best. Passionate. Passionate. You know what to do. Skull. Production value. <laughs>